Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I truly appreciate you stopping by. Today I'm going to be showing you exactly how I take care of my plants when it comes to preventing pests from being on my plants. Um, I mentioned in my last video that I have been noticing that some of my plants have gnats on them and that was not a problem that I had before I got my um, moisture plants and for the most part when I say that I'm talking about my um, uh, peace lilies sorry <laughs> I don't know why that skipped my mind but my peace lilies from the time that I got my peace lilies I have been seeing gnats in my home and so as of right now I don't think they're limited to the peace lilies and so I have to go through all of the plants in my house and I have to do this exact method that I'm going to show you on my plant what that I, I have here is today. the SSR method which is scoop spray replace scoop i scoop out the topsoil on the plants and that includes anything that would be at the very very bottom of the plant that could have gnats growing inside of it because i do have cover pots and it's when i look into my cover pots that i see that there is something living in the bottom because they'll they'll go right into the little holes at the bottom so i scoop that out that's the first s and then i have the spray i spray my solution to keep the gnats from feeling comfortable. I don't want them to feel comfortable on my plants. I want them to feel this is the wrong place to have a family. So I use a spray and I'll show you what's in my spray. And then I replace, I replace the topsoil. I replace the topsoil so that it's all new and there's nothing in it. And I do treat my topsoil that I put on top of it, or should I say my top mixture, because I try to use the very same mixture that I have in the pot so that the top layer is indicative of what's going on underneath. I did find that in the past I used something else to top off my soil, but it doesn't tell me what the soil underneath is doing because it's a completely different substrate. And so if I topped, I at one time I topped my plants with black sand and it looked amazing, but it told me nothing about what was going on in the soil. The sand would feel dry, but the soil would be very wet. And so I don't like to do that. I like to try to mimic whatever is in the soil. And so that's what I'm going to replace it with. I'm going to replace it with something that is basically inside of the pot where the roots are so that I can gauge it a little bit easier because I don't use a moisture meter. I love them. They're wonderful, but I don't use it. So I have to make sure I can gauge what's going on in my Start pot by showing you my soil mixture. Now, this is my favorite soil mixture that I have, and I have been using this. It holds the perfect amount of moisture for my plants. And so over here, I have cedar bark. You see right over here, the cedar bark I really like because cedar pests don't like cedar, and so I like to use it in my pots. I was using the cedar, well, this is not cedar bark, it's cedar mulch. I was using the cedar bark that people use for their pets, but that stuff is so messy. It just blows everywhere. It's great inside of the soil, but it just blows everywhere, and it was just too messy. So now I'm using the cedar mulch, and the way I treat all of my soils before I put them into my plant is I treat them with hot water. I have a whole video showing you exactly how I do that when I reuse my substrates. I use hot water and I just make sure that there's nothing living inside of it before I even start off. And then I have just a little bit of perlite in here. I don't put perlite in all of my mixtures anymore only because I love spider plants and I can't use perlite in spider plants because it does turn the tips of the plant brown. And so, but this right here is not going to be for spider plants, so it's okay. And then back here, I have some Coco Coir. And this right here is repurposed from some plants that I purchased. And I like to use everything. I don't get rid of things that um, that was in a previous plant or anything like that, unless there is some kind of pesty disease in it or anything like that, that I just can't do anything with it. But outside of that, I reuse everything. This smells so good, I have to tell you that. <laughs> I love the way the mulch smells. It's so calming. The cedar mulch, cedar smells so good, which is one of the things, um, the attributes about it that's really good for you because it is a very has a very calming effect on people. So this is still just a little bit moist because I it's only been a few hours since I treated the mulch. So this right here I'm going to mix up and it pretty much just looks like this and it makes for a very airy mix but I will tell you that the mulch does hold on to moisture which is why it's used for pest, pet so pet beds because it will hold on to moisture while it's repelling bugs and so this is what I like to use but it is 
not the same as using orchid bark to me the orchid bark that i was using purchasing it does not hold on to moisture as well as this does especially not when it's mixed with the um coco coir but it is a very good thing to keep the feet of your plants nice and dry or should i say so not then i'm also going to show you what i use in my bottle which is my spray that i use to scoop and then spray this is my spray and the secret weapon of my spray, cedarwood. <laughs> Again, another cedar product. If you do the research on cedar, you will see that pests really just don't like cedar oil. And I'm going to put a couple of the facts on the screen, but of course you can do your research so that you are comfortable with whatever it is that you're using in your plants. This is what I use. It's what works for me. And I know that if I take my spray, if I see a gnat and I spray it, the gnat goes down right away. And so I know I'm not torturing anyone and I don't, I know they're gnats, but I don't like to use something that gradually kills them because to me, that's like torturing them. <laughs> and so I don't like to do that. I like to just, just get it over with. You can't live here. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry, but you can't live here. <laughs> so cedar oil is my oil of choice. I used neem oil for a very long time and neem oil is great, but I cannot put my plants outside with neem oil because they coat the um, the natural things that you want outside in your garden. They, the neem oil will coat those things. And I like to put my plants outside, whether it's for an afternoon or a season, I like to put my plants outside, but the cedar oil simply makes it so that they don't go near the plant. And so I just like this a little bit better, but that's my choice of what I like to use and what I like to accomplish with when I'm trying to keep my plants pest free. So now I'm just gonna show you exactly how I do this process. And um, I'll be back in a little bit. Okay, so this is my Xanadu. Xanadu or my uh, Philodendron Hope. Look how beautiful she is. Now, this plant right here likes to stay relatively dry. But I have noticed that there have been, I saw a gnat flying around her soil. And so I'm going to start with her because I'm starting in this room. I am systematically going from room to room. And so I'm going to start with her because I know I have repotted her, but I just want to make sure that everything is okay. And with this one, the challenge will be not replacing her soil too high because this part of the plant needs to be, um, it needs to be outside of the soil. So I cannot fill her up so much that she doesn't have that open. So what I will do, see, yeah, this will come right out of her nursery part because it hasn't been that long since I've repotted her, but I have to get a little bit of the soil off the bottom just to make sure the gnats are not underneath. And then, or I, you can just lift the soil. Like if I lift this right up, the soil, see how the soil is not even attached to the nursery pot? I can just spray the holes underneath, and I think I may just do that so I don't make a big mess, and then I will just um, go from there.
Okay, so I have replaced all of the soil that is on the top of this, the top portion, out. and this is pretty much all that I took out. I just took out that very, I just took out that very top layer because that is usually where you will see that the um, pests will lay their eggs. Now I do realize that the leaves themselves can be the source of where different things tend to congregate and do different things. Not necessarily gnats, although gnats, if when I do spray them with the solution they tend to sometimes i'll notice that there'll be a dead gnat on the leaf i will just let you know that so you have to keep cleaning it down now these leaves are not very sensitive and so what i will do i will spray the leaves give it a nice spraying and you see these leaves have a little curl to them so i make sure i pay attention to each and every leaf yeah there's a dead gnat right there from the last treatment okay on the back in all of the juicy parts near the spine. This is what I, what I will do, and this will prevent anything from um, being on the plant. I just have a mixture. Just in different rooms of my house, I have a spray bottle with what I need just so that I can get to it as soon as I see a gnat or anything on my plants, I can just go right to it. So now I just let this sit for maybe about two minutes and then I clean it off. Okay, now I will tell you that in general, I don't use disposable items to clean my plants because I know that I'll just have to keep disposing of them. I have um, some specific things that I use to clean my leaves that just makes it nice and soft on the leaves. Today I'm using something disposable, but that's just for the purpose of this video for the most part. And then other than that, my, um, my caddy that I keep my, my pest control in. I just washed all of the towels that were in it. So I don't have it right now. <laughs> and you'll see that this is extremely shiny now. This is not just because it is wet. It's also because of the cedar oil. And so in that spray bottle, I have cedar oil. I, of course, for the most part, it is water, but it is cedar oil along with, I have Dr. Bronner's soap, cedar oil, a little bit of alcohol and some peroxide. So all of those things, you put them on there, you don't want to expose your, expose your plant to the sun or very bright light, like if you have it under a grow light, you want to let this dry down a little bit. And I will tell you, if this plant needed to be watered, I would take this and just put it right into the shower and let the, uh, the shower just run all over it. And again, I'm just concentrating on getting every single nook, including the tips. Because if you leave the tips out, that can be a place where sometimes that's where plant the pests go because the tips are very easy to suck sap from. So just make sure you get front and back and that you handle the tip of the plant as well. And then I just go up the stem as well. I will say this is a whole lot of work, especially if you have a whole bunch of plants. But once you do it, you reduce your chances of having an infestation of any kind of pest on your plants because it brings you right up close and personal. So if you were to do this, and like for me, it's going to be a big job, but it's actually extremely relaxing in my opinion. It could have a lot to do with the cedar oil because again, that cedar oil has a calming effect on people. And so that could have a lot to do with it. But honestly, I just went over this plant more times than I really needed to simply because I love to see the plant shine, number one, and also because this is just very calming. So this is just the first leaf that I've done, but I'm going to go through all of the leaves here and I'm going to allow this to sit over there where it's not right in the window. Today is a cloudy day, but I still don't like the idea of it being close to a window. This is a west facing window that this plant sits in. And so I don't want to expose it to too many rays and then have problems on the leaves behind getting rid of pests. 
Okay, so that's the first leaf. So I'm just going to go through and I'm going to clean all of the leaves, all of the stems, and then it'll be ready to go back into its cover part after I thoroughly wash the cover part. So the next part of my pest prevention system is to make sure that the areas around my plants are not being, um, not being neglected. If I drop soil or anything like that, I always try to make sure I vacuum it up or I just scoop it up because if you leave soil around your plants, that will definitely encourage bugs to feel comfortable and you don't want that to happen. And so what I do is I will take my Mrs. Myers spray. Pests do not like this. And this is a very soft type of a clean. It's really healthy for your family, but it's not healthy for bugs. And so every spring, I always make sure that this is the only thing I'm using to clean my home because this will prevent pests from doing much of anything. At one point we had ants inside of our house and it was so frustrating. And I think it was shortly after we got um, our dog because I think they got they got to his um, bowl and that was just it. They found a source of food and that was what was drawing them. And so what I have to do, what I had to do for two seasons straight was use this everywhere, every low area, every window. I just sprayed it down with this stuff and it made it did a major deterrent and so now we don't have the issue that we had with ants but i do attribute that to the fact that i use this to clean all of the um every opening every window every door every everything <laughs> i just had this right here and i would spray it on there and so i use this i will use this spray and i will spray the outside of my pots just spray the outside of your pots wipe it down you just let the smell of this stay there and it is a major deterrent of course some some pests don't even go onto the pot. They will go onto the leaves just from a window or a curtain. And so what I do is I spray my curtains. Just, just spray the curtains down, spray the windows down, spray the sills, the walls, the baseboards. All of it gets a spray of this right here. And I will tell you, this is a, a pricey item. Normally for this size, which is 16 ounces, this will be, in my area, if it's not on sale, it's about $4.40. And it will go on sale for about $3.40, which is a good, a fairly good price. But if you buy the concentrated container, which is, I believe, a 32-ounce container, you get to make, it's a quarter cup of the mixture to a gallon of water. So I don't, re I don't replace this with um, another bottle, another spray bottle. I have my spray bottle. I know what I'm going to put into this, but I actually buy the concentrated version and I refill it. So that's a major way for you to keep the cost down on this product. My favorite scents for these right here, this is the peony. I love peony anything, peony candles, peonies themselves. I showed you a picture of those, but I also like the rose scent, the geranium scent, and the basil scent. That was a shock for me that I would love that one so much, but I like the basil as well. But this has been a major plus for my pest, my anti-pest campaign. <laughs> okay, the last thing that I'm going to share with you is just alcohol. This right here is not necessarily just alcohol. It's hand, san hand sanitizer spray. And I will use this. If I just get up in the morning and I'm just looking at my plants, I will just pick this up. I have one of these in almost every room in my house. I will just pick this up and I will spray my window sills. I, I know I clean with the Mrs. Myers, but I will just spray this on my window sills. Just, just like that. I will go all around my windows and everything like that. If there's a table that has a little something on it, I'll just spray the table and it's just alcohol. It, it dries really, really quickly. I don't spray the plants with this, but this, because this is not, this is not um, diluted with water. This is just, this is just Zep hand sanitizer. But I wanted something in a spray bottle. Of course, you can put alcohol into this and do whatever you're going to do. But this was just a lot more cost effective. I purchased this in the Home Depot. And so this was something that really worked out well. And again, I just go through and I just spray down, even if it's the curtains, because remember, spider mites don't need to live on the plant. They can eat and then go home, and the home can be the curtain. So if you clean the plant and you haven't, you haven't touched the area around it, you may still have your problem simply because the spider mites are not living on your plant.
the most part, those are all of the things that I do to keep my plants free of any kind of pest. Again, I have to look at my plants all the time. And because I have so many of them, my plants that have many leaves, for instance, my pothos, I put them right into the shower and I let the water just run all over them. And then I spray them. I spray them with my solution, but I don't do them individually. I will just like, you know, kind of fluff through them. But for the most part, I don't clean them individually. I put them right into the shower and let the water just really shower them up. I get them a little bit soapy with the, with the spray that I have, but they don't get individually cleaned. And so far, I, that's been working out for me. I would absolutely love to know any things that you do in order for you to keep your plants from having pests. So anyway, I hope this video was useful to you. I know for me, I always look for videos that share information. I will share a couple of videos down below that I found to be helpful and I will, um, so that you can maybe get something from those videos as well because they were, they are things that help me a lot in doing whatever I do. So, oh, I have one more thing that I have to show you. A lot, I know, I'm coming with this poll. I get asked a lot about my um, system for being able to have my plants hang on one, my, my plants being able to hang on one bar that doesn't break and um, just having something strong enough. This is the pole that I use for my plant. This is a pole, it's adjustable, it's a curtain rod, not a curtain rod. This is adjustable. This is something that my husband actually brought for my daughter's closet. And before he put it in there, I looked at it. I saw how strong it was. I said, wow, that would be perfect for my plants. And so I used, I asked him to get me one. I didn't use that one. I asked him to get me one for my plants. And I have not gone back since because this right here can hang right in front of my window and I can have my curtains behind it. But then my plants can hang from this and I don't have to worry about in the evening time when I close my curtains, I don't have to worry about moving plants because it's actually separate. The pole that has these plants on it, it's separate from the rest of my, from my curtains. And so I don't have to worry about moving them. But this is the pole that we use. They sell it in Home Depot and Lowe's, I believe. And they, it's in the closet section. It is just a closet pole for the organization section. And it is extremely durable so it's very helpful it. because it does not break it doesn't bend this one right here is supported in the middle with some brackets because i didn't want it to dip in the middle because it's extended pretty much to the full capacity and so it's supported in the middle but it, it's been up there for a cool year and a half now and i've never had a problem with it and i'm not gentle with it with wet plants dry plants it stays just fine so i just wanted to share that with you because i know i got a few questions about that and outside of that, I have hanging hooks that are iron that belong on the outside, but I have them inside my house with my um, plant curtain. So that was what you saw in my bedroom. Huh, I keep forgetting to mention that, <laughs> but I didn't forget today, so I'm happy. So thanks again for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to give me a big thumbs up. And if you have subscribed to my channel, I say thank you to you. And I hope you enjoy the content that I create. And I will talk to you in a future video. Bye, guys.